When you hear or see the phrase World War II tank, there's probably a couple things that first come to mind. You're probably thinking of the legendary Tiger I tank that inflicted heavy losses on its enemies with its 88mm gun. Or maybe the fast and versatile T-34s. Or maybe just the L3 meatball launcher. Or maybe if not those, then you might actually be thinking of the legendary M4 Sherman. The M4 Sherman was one of the most mass-produced tanks in all the entire war, and it actually in fact served on every single front and theater of the war, from the jungles to the Pacific to the scorching hot deserts of North Africa, and from the fields of Normandy to the frost-bitten winters of Russia. However, we're not going to be talking about just the normal Sherman. We're going to be talking about a rather deadlier version of the M4 Sherman. It was only here that the German tankers of the Western Front realized that their big cats and tigers were on the brink of extinction. Hello my fellow comrades, it is Soldier Do Gaming here and welcome back to yet another Geek Time episode. In this episode we're going to be talking about one of the most feared weapons that the Germans came across on the Western Front. And that is the M4 Sh Sherman 76W family. So let's go ahead and just get into it shall we. So the M4 Sherman 76W family um, came into being due to the fact that the Americans were having um, let's say technical difficulties trying to face the more superior and more well-armored German tanks on the Western Front and North Africa. One of the most infamous tanks of those was the Tiger I, or pretty much the entire Tiger family, which consists of the Tiger I and the Tiger II, which is the King Tiger, which entered the war very, very later, like in 1944 to 1945. But anyway, they had little to no success trying to penetrate it from the front. And their 75mm uh, Shermans, which was the uh, default weapon, or pff, default weapon, the standard gun that was put on the Shermans at the time, and they had no luck uh, trying to penetrate it from the, from the front side. The only real way they could actually take this out was trying to shoot it from the back or side and obviously the majority of the time they went up against these things they were facing towards the front of it so the Americans had to come up with a plan in order to at least get some sort of weapon that can take these things out and that weapon would be the 76 millimeter main guns that would be put onto the new Sherman 76 family, hence the name 76, which stands for the caliber of the weapon that the Sherman had. And this weapon proved to be very, very successful at knocking out big German cats. And the gun itself could actually penetrate through the front armor of most German tanks with ease. Although, even though this gun could take out tigers, it was still kind of flawed. Sort of like the tiger ambush scene from Fury. <laughs> oh, why are you pulling me? I'm right! So by now you would probably expect me to go a little bit more in depth about this stuff, listing dates and battles and all this different stuff that led up to the production of the 76mm Sherman tanks. But guess what ladies and gentlemen, we're doing something different this episode and that different thing is I'm going to be in a collab with one of my subscribers and good friends of mine, Nuke Conan, and uh, he's gonna take it away from here. But after this, after this video, whenever it's done, um, 
there'll be some more information on Nuke Conan if you want to go subscribe to him, go watch his streams. He streams like almost every single day, which is freaking crazy to me. And without further ado, take it away, Nuke Conan. The M4A3 E8 is a regular M4A3 Sherman, but fitted with a 76 Mike Mike M1A2 cannon instead of a 75 Mike Mike M3 cannon. It's also fitted with some additional armor and made more reliable and faster. In 1942, when the Generation 1 Sherman tanks first saw combat in the deserts of North Africa, they excelled against their more lightly armed and lightly armored opponents, German Panzer III's and Italian tanks. But by 1943 and 1944, the 75 Mike Mike Shermans were inferior compared to the new and more powerful German tanks, such as the Tiger I Panther, Panzer IV Offs H, and Stug III Offs G. Therefore, the Americans made plans to counter the technological superiority of German armor. The more powerful, high-velocity cannon was to replace the low-velocity 75 Mike Mike cannon on German tanks. While the 75 Mike Mike cannon found it near impossible to penetrate the frontal armor of Tigers, Panthers, Panzer IV H's, and Stug III's, the 76 Mike Mike cannon had a significantly easier time piercing the frontal armor of these four German beasts. M4A3E8s arrived on the Western Front in December of 1944. They arrived in time to participate in the Battle of the Bulge. Although they could take out a Tiger tank by shooting it in the front, M4A3E8s could just as easily get knocked out by a Tiger tank, or any of Germany's main battle tanks of 1944 and 1945. The M4A3E8's frontal armor was still not enough to effectively block German high-velocity shells of 75 Mike Mike or higher. To solve the problem of insufficient Sherman armor, the Americans built the M4A3E2 Jumbo, the 76 Mike Mike cannon. The M4A3E2 Jumbo had an impressive 100 Mike Mike thick sloped frontal armor plate and a 152 Mike Mike thick turret, making it as good, if not better, than a Tiger I tank. The Jumbo tanks, as well as the American Pershing heavy tanks, were the best tanks the Americans had by the end of World War II. However, there were even fewer of these American Tiger III tanks than M4A3E8s. Overall, 76 Mike Mike Shermans and Pershings came in too late in the war to make a significant difference in the outcome of World War II. From 1942 until the end of World, uh, of World War II, the overwhelming majority of the American tank force was 75 Mike Mike Shermans. A whopping 50,000 plus Sherman tanks had been produced by the end of World War II, a number the Axis could not hope to match. Bruh. Almost all Sherman tanks used the 75 Mike Mike cannon. The 75 Mike Mike Sherman was still in active and widespread use by the Allies when World War II ended. To get a sense of how small of a percentage M4A3E8s were in the total Sherman force, less than 3,000 M4A3E8s were produced by the end of the war. The Allies on the Western Front were able to defeat the powerful German tanks because of the sheer number of tanks the Allies had. To take down a Tiger tank, the Allies would rush three or more Sherman tanks to flank the Tiger tank and shoot it from the side or rear. Allied tanks would take more casualties than the German armored forces. However, while the Allies could easily replace every tank they lost, the Axis could not replace the tanks they lost. Furthermore, Allied air superiority was a huge factor in overcoming German armor. Allied bombers actually destroyed more German tanks than Allied ground forces did. The Allied bombing campaign of the German factory just destroyed a significant portion of German tanks as they were built as they were being built in the German factories. Lastly, the Allied situation was exemplary compared to the German supply situation. The Allies had plenty of supplies, fuel, spare parts, ammo, tank production materials, trucks to transport all the supplies, and the sort. In the year in the later years of the war, the Axis had a shortage of pretty much everything. Thank you everyone for your time. Once again, big thanks to Soldier Dude for featuring me. Please like, subscribe to join Soldier Dude's channel, and turn on notifications so you know when he posts. He's a superb comrade, and his videos are always well made, crafted with dedication and effort, and worth watching. Thank you everyone once again. Hope you've had a wonderful day so far. Hope you're enjoying the video so far, and have a wonderful day. See you on the near future. Love you all, and peace out. Passing the mic back to my good pal, Soldier Dude. Thank you very much, Conan. And uh, don't forget, guys, that I will have a link to both uh, Newt Conan's Twitch and YouTube channels down below in the description, just so you guys can go check him out. And if you happen to catch one of his live streams, which he does pretty much every single day, um, if you happen to pop in, uh, go ahead and let you know that your fellow comrade in arms, Soldier, sent you. And on that note, I think that's going to be it for today's episode. So... If you guys did like this video, um, do be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to know whenever another video comes out, hit the notifications bell. 
and maybe just subscribe. It really does help me out and helps me grow as a channel so that I become bigger and more powerful by the subscriber. Muha! Sub to new Conan links in description. Go do it now!